Today, I'm going to show you how you can take a standard Python MCP server built with the official MCP SDK and deploy that to Azure Functions. Uh, let's get into it. I've got this repo open, which is open source repo that all of you can check out afterwards. And it's got the classic weather.py MCP, uh, MCP server example from the docs. So here you can see we're using that fast MCP class to set up the server. And then uh, down here, we've got some tools like the get alerts tool, takes an estate code, returns back alerts. So we want to host this with Azure Functions. The first thing we can do is make sure it's working locally. So I'm going to go ahead and type func start in the terminal. That will start up the Azure Functions emulator and that server as at localhost 7071. Now it's started up. Now I'm going to open mcp.json. And this is how we tell VS Code what MCP servers we are configuring that we want to be able to use with GitHub Copilot. And you can see local MCP server points at that 7071 URL from the Azure Functions emulator. So I can click Start on that. And we can see it has communicated with the MCP server. And then I also go over here to Copilot and configure tools and make sure that this MCP server, local MCP server is enabled. It should be turned on. So I'll press OK. And now I'll ask the question, uh, any weather alerts for California? So it should see that it has a tool available. It did. It found the get alerts from the local MCP server. Uh, so we're going to say continue. We could also you know, always allow this uh, so that we don't have to always press continue. And that's always presented as a security thing. And, uh, and then we get back the response. That was very fast. So that is the local server. It is working. Awesome. So now I'm going to stop that local server. And I'll also disable it here. And let's move on to deploying this onto Azure. Uh, so I've, I've already deployed it using the AZD CLI. So you can see I ran AZD up. And what that did was provisioned a resource group, a function app, a storage account to store the code, analytics for uh, tracking, um, you know, telemetry and all that stuff. Uh, uh, even, do, even using a virtual net for the private communication for things. And uh, even adding an API management, which I'll show in a bit. So all of this has been, has been provisioned and we get the endpoint in the end of the functions app. So that is deployed there already. It only takes a few minutes to do it, but I did it before just to save time. So now we should be able to use this remote MCP server. So this MCP server is pointing at the function app. So this function app does require a function key authentication. So we can pass that in with the X functions key header here. And importantly, we're not hard coding it in this file. That would be bad. You never put a key in plain text in a file. We're using this input mechanism where VS Code is going to prompt us for the input. Uh, so let's just go ahead and try starting the server, and we should get the, the prompt. Uh, so start, uh, and it's prompting for the name. Uh, let's see, I did this earlier, so it actually already has the name in there, but we can get it from the output. And then the key. So the key is uh, we can get that from the portal, from the app key page. So I'm copy and paste that. And then you can see it actually fills it in in the mcp.json. So we can see, oh, OK, this is the value of that. And then since this input is marked as a password, it uh, blanks it out. Uh, but we can see that it is it does exist. It is specified. So that server is now running. So we're going to go over to our tools. And this time, enable the remote MCP server. Press OK. And then say, OK, any weather alerts for Texas? The hope is that this time it's going to use the remote MCP server. And it did. You can see that right there, remote MCP server. Uh, I'm going to continue with that call. And uh, it's making the call. It's getting the response. You can expand this, see the response, and then see how Copilot chose it. And, and there we go. So we got back, we got back the response, and that worked. Uh, now. That's awesome that that worked, um, but you may not want to be, you know, uh, passing around functions keys uh, to enable people to use your servers. 
So the next option is actually to use proper MCP uh, authorization instead, uh, following the MCP spec. Uh, so let's go and stop this server and I'll make a new chat here. And so this next option is the one that has the APIM on top, the API management gateway on top. And it is uh, implementing the MCP uh, authorization. Uh, there's some great docs about it, both in the MCP and also this great blog on the GitHub blog about uh, using secure authorized servers. So the APIM gateway is implementing that spec. Uh, so this one also needs a little bit of configuration, uh, just the name. So let's start this and we can get the name from the AZD output and that's correct. So now the name is filled in and I'm going to uh, stop this, restart it and uh, Looks like in this case, da, 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 I'm going to disconnect account. I already authenticated earlier when I was testing this out. So let me go ahead and disconnect the account and then start it so I can show you the full configuration. So when I press start, you can see here it says the MCP server wants to authenticate to Microsoft. So I'm going to say allow and select my account. So that's what we want to see is that it's actually doing a user login flow uh, where it's getting permission from me that, you know, to, to authorize with this server. Uh, so that's what you should expect to see when you do this, when you connect for the first time. On subsequent times, it will already be connected to the account. So you, you have to explicitly disconnect it like I did uh, in these options here. Uh, but on the first time you'll get prompted to, you know, do that OAuth authentication. So that's now running. Uh, so let's go over to our tools and enable that APIM server and only the APIM server and do another quest. So any weather alerts for New York. Okay, uh, so this time it's gonna hit up remote MCB server APIM. And uh, let's see if it's gonna get the alerts this time. There we go, we got back the alerts. So this is awesome, right? We're able to connect to the server and just do an ENTRA login, an OAuth login, and uh, not have to pass in this key. So when you're, you know, when you're actually, you know, actually deploy it and you share this uh, with your users, you can just be using the APIM URL and uh, and not use this function URL at all, uh, so that you don't have to be passing around functions keys, uh, which you know has certainly security risk with it. Uh, so this is really cool. And uh, now you can see it all working. Please go and try it out yourself. Please give us any feedback. Let us know how it's working for you, if you have any questions, and if there's any way we can make it better for you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Mm -hmm.